welcome again to today's webinar, which is brought to you by the ICC, the Institute of Certified Chartered Economists. We're glad that all of you can join us from Africa, Asia, Europe, and the Americans. Uh, we promise to make this very concise, but yet very insightful webinar on a very important topic uh, for all of us that have joined, I believe, uh, that are interested in the topic of navigating the evolving landscape of mutual funds strategies for success in asset management. So asset management stroke mutual funds and how to navigate the evolving landscape. So we're very privileged that all of you are able to join us. This session is recorded. You will have it available on the ICC YouTube channel uh, after the session. Uh, so welcome all of you. As I said earlier, this is going to be a very interactive session. We want you to be part of the conversation. Therefore, you have the opportunity to put in your questions by the Q&A button. Uh, on the Zoom app. So if you're familiar with the Zoom app, you will see there's a Q&A button. That is when I want you to come in with your questions and I'll read it to your speaker after his presentation. Now, before that, and for the benefit of those that are joining us for the first time and then not ICT, I'm going to use the next two or three minutes to brief you about what the ICC is and what you can do with the ICC as far as your career growth is concerned. So I'm going to share my screen and do a short presentation about the ICC to all of you so that you can really uh, understand what we are doing at the ICC and how you can be a part of it. Just a moment. Yes, yeah, so this is about the ICC. So the ICC is uh, the Institute of Certified Chartered Economists. Um, it's a professional body, uh, association of economists globally. Uh, the Institute provides the prestigious Chartered Economist designation. I believe that most of us are aware of professional designation. Uh, we have several professional qualifications in various fields and disciplines. The ICC is in the field of economics and related uh, uh, discipline. So if there's any one of us, whether you are already an economist, you are aspiring to become an economist, or based on your current job or your current role, it requires that you have some basic knowledge in economics, then the ICC is the best qualification for you. And this is the global qualification and the leading professional qualification for economists in the world currently. We have members across all parts of the world. And I believe that that is a kind of association or society that you would love to be a part of. So the ICT provides the Chartered Economist designation uh, globally. The vision is to raise economies globally with the highest ethical standards through quality education and collaborative learning. That is a vision of the ideas, the leadership uh, of the ICC. Uh, as you can see, I'm down here together with my colleague, who is going to be the main speaker for today, Gorish, as part of the uh, International Board of Standards. I am working as a global head of strategy and membership at the ICC, and Gorish is a global head of our partners, who is also a fellow of the ICC, as well as our governing council. So briefly, uh, one will ask, how can you become a member of the ICC? So the ICC membership page, first of all, I should say that. So you first need to become a member, then you take the step further by completing the, 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 the qualification to end the chartered economic designation. Now, to become a member, there is a, a requirement, and the requirement that is that you must be at least you know admitted to a bachelor's degree or equivalent. And therefore, even if you're in your first year of your bachelor's studies, you can be a part of the ICC. So from that upwards, first year students, whether you have your degree, you have a a PhD, masters, and what have you, all of you are qualified to enroll into the ICCE to begin your chartered economy. We have various categories of membership. There are three. We have the learner. The learner is an individual who is yet to complete the ICC curriculum through examination. We have a charter holder that is an individual that has completed all the ICC curriculum and met other you know uh, charter requirements, as I'll show you in the next few slides. And then we have fellows, these are distinguished uh, 
are individuals, professionals who have extensive years of experience as economists, uh, working whether in the industry or academia, or in government or private sector. We identify them and confer on them the status of the fellowship. That is what the fellows are. Now, to become a chartered economy with the ICC, there's an uh, examination requirement, just as the practice for all other professional qualifications. For the ICC, our curriculum is structured in three levels, it's four levels. The first three levels are four levels, you know, uh, of curriculum. That means that any learner will have to go through that four levels. And then we have the final level, which is the specialization, where that place you have a choice to decide which area you want to specialize in. As we know, economics is a very broad discipline, it covers every aspect of our existence. So we make sure that there are some level of specialization that you can actually tap into uh, for your own uh, career ambitions. So for the core levels, there are level one, two, and three, uh, you're supposed to complete the exam set there. So level one, these are the papers you can see on my screen. Uh, we have the level one exams there. We have level two exams at level three. Level one, we have investment, micro one, macro one, financial system and development. We go to level two, there's a continuation of those in level one. We have level three papers as well. I'm going to put a link, uh, the website to the curriculum page in our chat box so all of you can visit later on to familiarize yourself with what that I'm sharing here today. So in case you don't grasp it well. Then I told you we have the specialization. This is where you decide on which area you want to specialize. For the ICC, we have financial economies, petroleum economies, energy, health, managerial, marine, labor, industrial. So what it means is that after completing the first three core levels, you will decide which of the areas you want to specialize. So that at the end of the day, you want to be known as a chartered financial economist. You want to be known as a chartered petroleum economist or chartered managerial economist or chartered labor economist. You decide which of these specializations you want to specialize. And again, you can specialize in multiple uh, uh, areas. So it's not that you are restricted to only one area of specialization. I'll put my email address there. So if you have any further questions regarding the ICC membership and how you can become a chartered economist, please feel free to reach out. I'll be more than happy to provide answers to all your questions regarding your ICC journey. The examination bits, uh, as I said, you have to complete the first four levels in a specialization through examination. So level one, it's all exams are multiple choice based. It's computer based, it's taken remotely. Uh, we don't work on the exam center system. You just have to log into the platform anywhere you are in the world. As long as you have a device and you're connected to the internet, you can take your ICC exams. Uh, that's wherever you are in, in the you can find the structure on the website. The past month for ICC exams is 50%. The exams is offered each month from January to December each, each, each month of the year. You can take the ICC exam. The specific dates in the month to take the exams communicate on the ICC website. And as you become a member, you become familiarized with this kind of information. So you can check out the website to know uh, we already in March exam date is passed. So the next exams is going to be in April and then May and June. Uh, in that order. So when you visit the ICC website, there will be dates there to know when to take the ICC exams. And then when it's time, you just log into the platform that you will get access to after becoming a member. And you can take your exams remotely without any uh, hassle. We provide exemptions. Exemptions here means that maybe you registered for the ICC. You already have a previous qualification in economics. For example, you have a bachelor's degree, you have a master's or a PhD in economics. With this, we, the ICC will grant you some exemption from some of the papers. Then you will write the remaining papers that you have, that is left. So that is how exemption works. I will create, we'll give you more details later on. We provide access to materials for all our learners. So you don't have to worry about paying extra money to get access to materials. We work on the platform, work at the platform called Pelego. So there, each of our learners, each of our learners can get access to free materials to prepare towards the ICC exam after giving you a curriculum guide, which gives you the various topics that you're supposed to read. Uh, and, and of course, some full questions in there that you can practice on. But most importantly, you're going to get access to materials for free. For fees and all of that, they are available on the ICC website. Uh, I think you can check it out. There's an enrollment fee of 210 USD. That is a one-time non-refundable fee of 210 USD. And you have an annual subscription fee of $112. And then you have to pay for examination fees per paper per level, as you can find on the ICC website. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we also provide scholarship for our learners. So we know uh, we want to support our learners to complete their qualification journey without any constraints. So we offer some form of scholarship. Currently, about ninety-five percent of our learners are on one form of scholarship, whether it's full or partial scholarship. So. I will welcome all of you. If you apply to become a member of the ICC after getting admission, you are free to apply for any of our scholarships that we offer. And I can assure you that uh, you are close to 100% uh, guarantee of getting a scholarship from the ICC. We have the Future Economist Scholarship Women Economist Network, which is for just for our female learners only. Uh, we have media professionals, so those, those media people that work in uh, in the business of media, reporting uh, on business and writing on business economies, they are free to apply for the media professionals. And then faculty, so if you're a lecturer or tutor at a tertiary level in any institution at all, uh, you can apply for the faculty scholarship and then more than happy to assist you. So I think I will stop here. Uh, again, I'm going to put some relevant links in a chat box so you can follow up with me, whether you want to read more on our website, if you have questions you want to uh, send them to me so that I can help you address them because I am the head of membership and so I answer to any question regarding becoming a member of the ICC and earning the globally recognized prestigious chartered economy designation from the ICC and we are here to help you achieve that dream and aspiration to help you boost your career. So ladies and gentlemen we are heading straight into our conversation for today and we are very privileged to have a distinguished fellow my colleague who has extensive uh, knowledge and experience in the finance world, having worked as a consultant for some of the big uh, corporations uh, in, in Asia and India, more specifically. Uh, he has worked on and still working on providing advisory services on, on asset management and wealth management and, and, and all of that. And today he's joining us to share his perspective on today's topic, navigating the evolving landscape of mutual funds. Of course, we'll just force under asset management. So, Gorish uh, Lagu, uh, please, we are ready to receive you. So, if you can take over now, share your screen, and present to us what you have. And after that, we are all coming to you to grill you, to ask you some uh, deep questions regarding the topic for today. So, kindly take over and run us through. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, uh, for a wonderful introduction to ICC. Hi, guys. Um, I'm just sharing my screen. Uh, for uh, today's topic, very intriguing topic, in my opinion, uh, in the personal finance space, uh, especially with the uncertainty that is involved, especially. Uh, so let me start with my favorite quote uh, by Mark Twain. Every one of us knows who, who is Mark Twain. So he says a very uh, interesting thing that uh, if you don't read the newspaper, you are uninformed. However, if you read the newspaper, you're misinformed. So, you know, uh, it's like uh, you have to navigate through this space very, very, uh, what should I say, carefully. And you have to not miss your goal. So what is important in personal finance, uh, uh, particularly, and in mutual funds is that there will be days where, you know, market will fall, markets will rise. Uh, you know, uh, the portfolio may not be doing as you would expect but if you know what's your goal and you uh, go to a particular uh, specialist so ideally you know uh, better to go to a specialist to to start with i know there are a lot of uh, diy uh, scenarios but that may not be very helpful in case of uh, you know uh, a, a professional approach is always better uh, so I'll just touch base quickly on the, the fundamentals of money management, you know, the income, the expenses, uh, we need something for the protection of our family, of ourselves, of our health, and ultimately the savings. So yeah, there are uh, two types of income. One is active, one is passive. Active income will be, you know, the, uh, the salaries that we get or our business income. Passive income is more like dividends or, you know, something like that. Yeah, or it could be rent from uh, our uh, commercial or residential uh, properties. Expenses, obviously, uh, they should be uh, only from the operational income. 
never uh, we should borrow to spend i mean uh, we've heard that thousand times uh, from all of our uh, you know earlier generation that we should never borrow to spend uh, i will say borrow but if it is helping to create assets like an asset i mean it could be a financial asset or a non financial asset like education or uh, you want to build a house or i will say don't borrow for you know uh, which is a depreciating asset would be would be a typical uh, thumb rule if you ask me this is very important uh, insurance uh, i'll quickly touch base we have to have every one of us because life is uncertain life is anything but certain hence we need to you know be prepared for the certainty of uncertainty you know as they say uh, so get a good term life cover get a good health cover it's very very important go ahead don't get a you know a uh, 100000 uh, new phone uh, once you get into a job or a good job or a stable job i would say first invest in term insurance and health insurance and then do the rest saving and investment well, i mean why we should what's wrong with only saving why we need to invest the obviously i mean we are all economists i mean in this particular discussion we know inflation it eats it literally eats up savings over time and uh, then you are left with nothing so ideally we should invest in uh, those assets or uh, those instruments that give a better return than the inflation naturally right so what do we do so we should start Let's see so obviously for compounding to kick in early the earlier we start the better it is and it is always good to make the money work rather than you know we working for the money as i said it's very important for uh, having goal based investing we need to have some goal either it could be a child's education or a, a vacation or you know i have a client who who invest to you know pay his life insurance uh, premiums which he pays annually but for that he invests every month some amount and ultimately uh, by the time his insurance uh, premium is due and that's quite a large because his uh, some insured also is very large he saves more than what is required so you know it could be a small goal or it could be a large goal you know like buying a house buying a property or uh, you know children's education children's marriage vacation could be anything it's always good to have a goal so what options do we have we have as i said property gold stocks bonds mutual funds bank deposits what is what is the best uh, i would say because the topic today is mutual funds yeah there will be people this is very important there will be people uh, or there will there is a theory that you know no no stock market is crashing there's a blood bath you know see there are bulls there are bears that is why the stock market is moving that is why uh, it's functioning so i will say uh, that there is always a reason not to invest but once you know the goal okay the goal is 20 years or the goal is 10 years for uh, maybe uh, education or could be marriage of uh, children so then uh, it's very clear that uh, what what is required and then go into uh, what is called as you know habit based saving or in india we call it as an sip in in the uh, western markets it's called a habit based saving so which means every uh, period we have a habit of putting x amount of money whatever we decide based on the uh, based on the goal into the instrument of choice that is uh, required for meeting that goal yeah so there is always reason not to invest so i i i feel we should we should always we should learn to cut the noise and focus on our goals yes uh, you will say uh, nowadays this trading is very uh, very very uh, you know the cool thing you know the bitcoins and the you know uh, the cryptos of the world it's a very cool thing uh, but uh, there is a sebi report uh that you know 95% of traders are losing money in trading and uh, you see you know see i mean uh, there would be people who are making money but 
we should focus on long term investing and yes there will be you know uh, some people or some days where you will make quick money but you will not make quick money every day so there's a high chance of losing and no one wants to lose uh, their hard earned money yeah so uh, there is also a question to us always ask that why not direct equity why mutual fund uh, simple reason um, direct equity you need time for research you need to understand uh, you know more about the industry the unit economics you need to understand the balance sheet and mutual fund is more you know a, a, a better tool uh, compared to direct equity because it it uh, spreads the risk which is very important and as so coming to the you know fundamental question as to what is a mutual fund yeah so we know mutual fund is a trust that pools the saving of a number of uh, investors who share a common financial goal so and the best part about uh, mutual funds is that you can start as little as 100 rupees yeah so that that is so simple uh, and what the best part is in 100 rupees you get the services of a professional fund manager to deploy the money yeah so obviously uh, it is subject to uh, market returns because it gives market returns of course uh, there is a caveat that you have uh, also uh, debt based uh, mutual funds or you know a mutual fund that invest in government securities which are more uh, stable in terms of return uh, obviously the returns are much lower but uh, uh, you know the returns are uh, much much uh, predictable if i can use that word and yeah uh, investment in mutual fund is obviously very cost efficient as uh, you know uh, we are using the uh, services of the best uh, fund managers uh, all across the world but because the pool is large the uh, cost efficiency comes into perspective so this is how mutual funds work uh, you know all the investors pool their money into the uh, you know the fund manager he invests he or she invests in the stocks or securities help to generate returns and then obviously deliver the uh, returns uh, back to the investors yes the types of uh, mutual fund there are various types uh, depending on the goals so there are some open ended funds there are close ended funds uh, there are uh, interval interval funds there are active funds and passive funds active funds is that there are those funds that are managed more actively uh, and passive funds are like the fund manager just uh, puts the money and then just uh, forgets about it. it's not a real uh, active investment wherein you know there is an active um, uh, purchase or sale of the portfolio uh, yes there are uh, income funds there are growth funds there are hybrid funds in terms of uh, the investment objectives and also as i said you know there are equity funds debt funds uh, that i was talking about earlier hybrid funds which are a mix or uh, you know uh, which have the best of the both worlds as they say someone wants to you know uh, take a bit of risk but not too much of a risk then hybrid funds are considered to be a uh, better option or uh, there are uh, different types of etfs they are very popular nowadays elss as well because they offer tax exemptions uh, with of course a lock in of uh, 3 years there are retirement schemes there are overseas funds and there are fund of funds fund of funds is like you know the mutual fund uh, invest in another fund and that is uh, why it is called fund of funds they are typical uh, different types so mutual fund is something you know if you want to invest in gold you have a mutual fund uh, for gold for silver you have uh, for silver you suppose uh, you say no i don't want to invest in india i only want to take exposure to us market so we have a us uh, uh, fund a mutual fund or a, a us uh, or a nasdaq uh, fund you know you said no i only want to i am very bullish on china i am not very bullish on india uh, you have a chinese fund so you know uh, there are different different types of funds for various types of investors and uh, for uh, their uh, respective goals obviously uh, we can um, enhance the power of compounding as i said start early if you start early you know uh, you get uh, good returns as as a uh, you know uh, one lakh uh, in an hdfc equity fund that someone has put in 1995 you would get 1.38 of uh, with a, a very good uh, cagr of 18% so i will you know suggest that you know as they say uh, have a regular habit uh, whatever if we could start as low as 100 rupees or 1000 rupees whatever what is the best part is uh, you get into a discipline you get into a habit second thing you get rupee cost averaging it helps 
in creation of long term wealth which is very very important very very important because that that uh, is uh, going to i will say uh, make us or feed us for the retirement uh, life because let's say every one of us or most of us would retire at say 60 65 and now the uh, human uh, uh, longevity is quite high uh, we see an average uh, age of 85 even 90 so say from 65 to say 95 or even 90 25 years of our uh, life where we won't be working and we also have to take into account you know the health issues and the various other things the inflation at that point of time so this is very important consult you know a good uh, advisor who will help you plan so that uh, you will be happy um, and have a worry free uh, retirement life or an or a, a old life i will say so i would i would say you know buy a good term insurance health insurance uh, uh, spend your first salary definitely you know on your own uh, or on on someone uh, that uh, you like a lot from the second salary start an sip and say whatever bonuses or you know the extra income that you get put into balance advantage fund it's the most risk free no brainer no brainer kind of uh, philosophy obviously at the end of the day you know you cannot buy a peaceful mind a fit body and a house full of love that is something that we have to nurture ourselves and you know uh, create it and build it progressively other things yes we can you know uh, plan a retirement uh, you know uh, do the uh, rupee cost averaging or goal based uh, financial planning and uh, you guys have any questions people like us are there you know to help you uh, navigate through uh, this uh, interesting maze of uh, the f- world of financial markets or mutual funds um, i will stop here i mean i can talk endlessly but uh, because uh, we have a we have a limited time uh, open to any questions uh, that uh, you guys may have Thank you, Gorish, uh, for that brief and concise uh, presentation. I think we will be going straight to the Q and A. Uh, so I welcome any questions. If you want to speak, you can raise your hand as well. I will give you the permission to uh, speak as well. So any of our uh, attendees, I see Huma Huma Kanta. If you would like to speak, your hand is up. I'm going to allow you to speak if that's what you want to do. Uh, so that if you have any question, you can so kindly unmute yourself and then you can ask your question. Uma, Uma Kanta, are you there? You are permitted to speak. So just unmute the mic and then you can. can ask the question so gorish i have a question that i wanted to just ask um so most of the presentations that you gave i i i feel it's it's got to do with more of a uh, you know individual financial you know goals and aspiration and all of that but i wanted to touch base regard to this to asset managers right so the institutional you know uh, fund managers that are considering or already running into our funds or considering launching funds and all of that you know we wanted to just ask a question targeting them because it's part of the uh, the subtext of our of our title for today so uh how can asset managers uh, enhance communication transparency with investors especially in light of the increased focus on investor education awareness right uh the, the reason is that there's a lot of you know sensitization a lot of financial literacy education ongoing uh, so how can asset managers uh, actually effectively communicate you know in a very transparent manner and efficiently to their investors that is whether they have mutual funds that individuals are investing or whether to institutional investors in some of their other funds or whatever so how can they effectively do this as asset managers in terms of effective communication and transparency yeah oh this is a very good question paul uh, asset managers um 
they are uh, given a particular uh, mandate and they can communicate uh, transparently through you know various guidelines that are laid out uh, by uh, the uh, sebi and what is also important is uh, in case there is any uh, fall or a rise or they see that the portfolio is doing too well or not doing well i think uh, it's always good to periodically communicate with the investor uh, as to uh, especially in india there is something called as you know uh, there is a monthly uh, update kind of a thing that the asset managers mandatorily have to give to all their investors uh, be it individual investors or corporate investors uh, as to where uh, they have invested what uh, they have exited what portfolio what counters they have exited what counters they have uh, you know invested during the month so i think uh, uh, correct transparency and uh, uh, constant communication and uh, is is very important uh, from asset managers to their investors uh, both corporate and individual so uh, my my is a full of questions which is question which is uh, it's, a, it's a broad question i just wanted to find out from you um what 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 is the current trend uh, in the asset management space in India, uh, mutual funds uh, more specifically, and also in the region, the Asia Pacific, what 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 have you picked up? What are the trends in the in the dynamics? Your know, what is changing? Uh, do we have any new uh, thing that is revolutionizing the the, the industry? Uh, be it technology, the issue about the Bitcoin that you you, you touch on briefly. What is what is the what is the nature of the current state, you know, of, of, of the of the asset management space and mutual funds in India and then the sub region? Yeah, yeah uh, so I will say the current uh, uh, the buzzword or the current of uh, theme, if I can say, is ESG. Yeah. So everyone uh, we know, uh, uh, you know, everyone wants to build a very sustainable planet. So uh, ESG uh, funds or ESG theme funds are uh, you know uh, liked a lot nowadays by the investors also uh, because uh, they invest in companies or counters that are uh, you know uh, working really hard towards uh, the uh, sustainability and building a better planet a, a healthier planet so esg is one theme technology obviously is another uh, then renewables yes that's a big space uh, that we are seeing in the asset management uh, renewables uh, sector that could be, uh, you know, uh, the cars, uh, it could be e uh, battery operated cars or uh, something like solar power or, you know, the likes of that. The next, of course, uh, we do have the old, um, old generation uh, companies that are doing very well, but also these newer companies who are into uh, these uh, uh, sustainable fuels or, uh, you know, uh, battery operated vehicles or solar power you know something like that that's that's also uh, picking up very well including uh, esg that's 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 a theme that uh, you know we are seeing is is a good trend and um, i would imagine it would continue uh, in the uh, near term future okay sure so the question here uh, so this one is thank you very much mr Paul, mr lagu for the dedicated insights is asking Regarding mutual fund, how can we locate them in Ghana to invest? And I think this one I'll answer. So, um, the the I'll start from the regulatory side, uh, which makes it easier. So to identify where to find mutual funds to invest in. Uh, so in the financial uh, uh, services industry, we have various players, uh, financial intermediaries, and these various players are licensed by certain regulatory bodies. And based on the license that they are giving, then the license will indicate the kind of mandate that they have in terms of what they can do and what they cannot do. So if you're in Ghana, then I can just make it easier for you. So we have the commercial banking you know, uh, sector, which is, of course, you know, uh, licensed by the Bank of Ghana. So if you go to the Bank of Ghana website, you find all the banks that are currently licensed by the Bank of Ghana. They don't do mutual funds related stuff, right? And then we have the asset management industry or the investment banking industry. These are licensed by the Security and Exchange Commission, the SEC or the SEC. Is that to invest in the mutual fund, you have to invest it with those that are licensed by the SEC, the Security and Exchange Commission. Okay. So even if you work into your bank that you want to invest in mutual fund, 
they're going to direct you to an asset management firm that has been licensed by the Security and Exchange Commission to offer that service. Okay, so because that's not the mandate of the bank. So for you to know where to invest, where to invest in terms of mutual fund, you have to go to the Security and Exchange Commission website. I know a couple of them, but I can't mention them because you know I don't want to cause any 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 stir or any of that stuff. So you have to visit the SEC website, Security Exchange Commission of Ghana. You can just Google it and go to their website. They have listed all the licensed investment firms uh, uh, there that you can get to know them and know who and who has the license to offer mutual funds in Ghana. And then you also, as you know, Goris mentioned, always go to talk to a financial advisor because they are more knowledgeable. They can compare and contrast. They have the information about these firms that you, you have no idea about. As you know, in Ghana, and of course, you know that recently there was a cleanup in the financial services industry and some of the companies, their yeah, licenses were revoked uh, because of bad performance and some violations of the, of the regulation. So you want to be careful and the only way to do that is talk to an expert, financial advisor, if you have, if you can, it's very advisable to talk to financial advisor and they will be able to guide you. They will put together uh, some of the top performing uh, asset managers before you, and then they will guide you to make the decision that can help you secure the kind of future they're looking for. But to find them, all of them, you have to go to the Security and Exchange Commission's website. But that is where you're going to find all the licensed investment banking firm or asset management firms. And then you can reach out to them or talk to a financial advisor to help you uh, select the best among them. So that is the answer for that question. Boris, I want to come to you. Uh, about technology, right? Uh, obviously, we all know how fintech, you know, uh, and technology shaping everything around that. More specifically, in the in the financial services industry, and I'm sure in the investment banking industry, asset management field as well, mutual funds, what have you. So my question is, how should asset management firms, uh, you know, position themselves? You know, you mentioned about integration of ESG, which is key, but talking about technology as well. First of all, how is that changing the space and how can they embrace you know, technology? What are the new frontiers that you are catching up with that has come to your attention that you believe you know, they have to pay attention to in this regard? So Paul, uh, in FinTech, uh, what is catching up, especially here, uh, is uh, things like uh, quick commerce, uh, the uh, payment apps or payment applications uh, which are payment banks as uh, we call them uh, here in india so they are catching up uh, very fast you know uh, one of uh, the biggest uh, companies uh, in india is already into that and venturing into that uh, big time uh, along uh, with uh, you know various other traditional players so that's another uh, space about fintech and generally also in asset management now everything is uh, online, uh, everything is catching up uh, very fast. And uh, as uh, on this technology, I will also say one thing, uh, because you mentioned the cleanup uh, in Ghana. Similarly, because of technology, uh, you know, uh, there are uh, some players, uh, as there are bad apples everywhere, there are players who, um, you know, commit uh, X amount of returns uh, to uh, the uh, investors uh, could be corporate or individual and uh, they fall into the trap. So I will just say as a, as a matter of caveat that before you consult any advisor, you know, just ask uh, whether, you know, the, the person is a licensed advisor, you know. So I think that's very important uh, because as technology is catching up, even the, uh, the fraud uh, mechanism is catching up very fast. So that's one thing. And as far as the asset management is concerned, yes, uh, we see uh, we saw a lot of churn in our uh, benchmark index, which is called uh, Nifty 50 uh, in India, Paul. And in that lot of companies, so uh, benchmark index is nothing but 50 of the most uh, renowned and the best market capital companies are part of that. We saw a lot of churn uh, with the, you know, maybe a cement company or an infra company going out of that benchmark index and a technology company coming in or even uh, uh, you know a quick commerce company can come in 
So you see, there is a lot of churn in the benchmark index. So which means obviously they are doing good. Uh, the companies are, you know, having the best of corporate governance practices are, uh, you know, uh, going D2C directly going to the consumer, uh, you know, having good, uh, uh, good processes and a good product. So the, obviously it will, it will catch the eye of the customer and uh, do well in the uh, capital markets as well. So I have a question here, which is about interest rates. Um, and the question is, um, what are the implications of the low interest rates environment on mutual funds? And how can asset managers navigate this challenge to deliver value to their investors? What it means that, as we know, uh, mutual funds is one of the uh, secure vehicles and as you know, in the investment uh, 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 landscape, uh, the more secure the investment, the lower the returns, you know, in and around us, right? So even if you're buying government, you know, treasury bills, you know, the rate is lower than other investment uh, schemes. So same applies to mutual funds. So uh, the question is, looking at that low interest rate, you know, environment around mutual funds, how can asset managers navigate to provide additional value you know, to the investors because you still want that fund to be attractive. You still want individuals and corporates to invest in mutual funds as you launch them. So how can asset managers navigate the interest rate environment and to be able to add more or create more value for the uh, investors? Sure. So, uh, you know, as you correctly mentioned, you know, interest rates are uh, coming down and uh, it's, it's very... Uh, important to note that uh, any returns is is uh, directly or indirectly related to uh, this particular rate so uh, what the asset managers can do obviously is a lot of churn because uh, they they are given a mandate so maybe they they have a mandate to invest only in bonds or maybe in uh, money markets or could be only in government uh, securities or could be uh, you know in uh, only blue chip uh, counters so they have to stick to the uh, mandate and they have to constantly. So it's, it's a very active uh, kind of uh, role and it becomes more uh, more engaging when the interest rates are not stable, like, like currently, you know, uh, anywhere in the world, uh, there is a lot of fluctuation. There's a lot of uncertainty. It could, there could be a war or something like situation in Ukraine or anywhere else and that affects directly or indirectly nowadays because so i think asset managers are uh, very proactive uh, nowadays and i will say uh, while investing it's very important to look into the history of the asset manager as well that is what we do before we recommend anything uh, you know the trend of the asset manager uh, and of the asset management company how they have performed you know how they have performed in previous crises because as i said there's always going to be some crisis or the other, you know, we have seen Lemon Brothers, we have seen the, uh, you know, the COVID crisis before, after that, we have seen the uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict. So there will always be a reason not to invest. Yeah. So we, we will uh, have to look out for reasons and uh, look out for reasons with good fundamental uh, understanding, fundamental study as to what is the good asset manager to go to and what is the good uh, asset management company to go to as you said uh, like uh, there is security exchange uh, commission there we have a security exchange board of india here in india and uh, their website has you know all the data uh, everything is uh, listed on the website and on the mfi which is the association of mutual funds in india everything is available the good performance the not so good performers everything including our details you know all of our de our details are there so you can come to know the veracity of uh, you know uh, even your uh, advisors you know uh, whether they are uh, uh, registered not registered you know genuine not genuine uh, and likewise does that answer your question Paul? you're on mute yeah so Just a moment, I have another question that I would like to ask. Sure. So, 
So the question, this one is for, for individual individual investors, uh, kind of. So how do you identify uh, funds whose investment objective matches your your needs, your financial goals? I think you mentioned it briefly in your presentation, but I'm still going to ask, how can we identify which funds meet your individual, you know, your, your financial goal of exposure? Uh, so uh, thanks. I mean, this is uh, also the most asked question to us for that, you know, which is the best fund to go to depending on the goal. So again, I'll say go to the goal, uh, study the patterns. Obviously, uh, the past performance does not reflect uh, that the same performance will happen in future. But, uh, you know, if uh, anyone has a, has a long term goal or a medium to long term goal of, say, seven to 10 years, uh, whatever uh, fund is recommended uh, to that particular investor should be there because uh, any any uh, advisor uh, will do a couple of things uh, first is understand uh, why that person is investing what is the goal what is the horizon and most importantly what is the risk taking ability someone who will you know take more risk than uh, you know uh, there is a possibility to put in more risky funds where the return also could be high and then uh, you know it is explained to the investor that uh, this is a risky fund and you could also lose uh, some money or uh, uh, maybe the entire capital but then you know so it's it's like a uh, tailor made so uh, it's very important to go through the history and as you said on the website everything is there right from uh, the performance from the first year or from the day one everything is available on the website and in case uh, anyone needs how to interpret uh, the data or how to you know go to a goal based approach people like uh, us are always there in the market you're on mute again yes so i'm going to ask the last but one question how important is aligning investor expectations and risk uh, uh, management in the success of mutual funds? So oh, how important is, is aligning expectations? I think and, that is and, most and risk, important. You know. Yes. This capital yeah. of an yeah. investor is very important. Yes. Uh, and it changes uh, from time to time. So uh, a young uh, Gaurish, maybe at the age of 25, would invest in a more risky funds you know but yes. now maybe 15 years down the line gaurish will not uh, invest that proportion in a risky fund you know he would move towards a more stable or a blue chip fund or you know a balanced advantage fund or a multi cap fund so it yes. changes so risk appetite changes from time to time uh, of the same individual and also of different individuals you know when you're uh, when you're alone or when you don't have dependents when you don't have family uh, there is a human tendency to take more risk yeah but uh, when you have a family when you have goals uh, when you have uh, dependents uh, you tend to be more uh, you know more uh, reasonable in your expectation of return and thus your risk appetite we have seen uh, coming uh, down or uh, tapering okay i have a question here from uh, honorable participants so patients so she's asking what are some emerging opportunities and potential growth areas within the mutual funds that asset management should be aware of? So uh, what are some of the emerging opportunities and then uh, what potential growth areas uh, within the mutual fund that asset managers should be aware of? Mm -hmm. So asset managers should be aware of uh, the new uh, upcoming uh, industries, like as you uh, were mentioning earlier, FinTech, uh, could be, you know, renewable energy, uh, you know, such like. So uh, asset managers now deploy their uh, limited uh, funds from the uh, erstwhile industries to the new generation uh, companies who are doing better. Obviously, they do their own due diligence. They have the process. And uh, uh, not only that, but there are new theme-based funds who are only doing this. So there is an ESG-based fund, uh, mutual fund, that does this across all asset management companies. I'm not talking only about one specific asset management company or there are there are uh, technology uh, theme 
mutual funds. So uh, which uh, companies that are only in the technology space, uh, the fund managers put the money in that. So uh, I think, uh, and this, this uh, space is ever evolving, ever changing, and asset managers also are always on their toes to look out for new opportunities uh, to invest because the earlier they invest uh, uh, into that particular uh, counter, the uh, more returns they will be able to uh, generate. So I think that is a very professional call that uh, the asset managers take in any market. Thank you, Gorish. So there's a question here from Dio Gracias, Peter. Uh, he said he's from Tanzania. So he's asking, how can I benefit from bonds or liquid fund? Which one is best than the other, bond or liquid fund? So he's asking. Uh, so that's again, uh, you know, a good question. Uh, and it again depends on the good. So bond or liquid fund uh, is uh, all, also depends on the goal and the uh, prevailing interest rates over there. And uh, you know, overnight fund will typically give a lower coupon rate and bond will typically carry a higher coupon rate, but will have a longer horizon. So you'll have to you know, check there. And firstly, we need to know what's your goal. So you know, it's, it's very uh, difficult to say uh, right now in this space, uh, which is better, which is not so. Uh, it everything is tailor made uh, as per uh, the risk appetite and the goal of uh, the particular investor could be individual or corporate. Uh, thank you very much, Doris. I think there's someone who raised their hand. Is there anyone else that wants to ask a question? If you have any questions, you can ask, and then you'll be wrapping up very soon. I think we made it. We made sure it's very. Uh, concise and insightful as much as possible. So, uh, is there any other one that wants to ask questions? Yeah, uh, Gorish, you can tell us briefly what you do, your firm, uh, what what exactly are like you doing uh, in the space and advisor? You can tell us briefly what you're doing uh, currently with your firm. Uh, yeah. Uh, pardon? Can you come again? Talking about your firm, your firm. The advisory firm, what, what is that have you been doing in this yeah. space? So, uh, what we do is typically uh, we are uh, a uh, SEBI registered, MP registered uh, advisory firm, and uh, we advise our clients uh, based on their goals uh, it, into uh, various instruments that are uh, available uh, in India. And uh, we also uh, take care uh, of their, uh, you know, uh, goal-based uh, requirements, what do they want, uh, their journey, and if there is a change, then uh, we ad uh, advise them. Also, we do tax advisory, so people come to us for uh, various tax advices, it, and also into insurance. Um, you know, so some people uh, think in insurance is a instrument uh, of, uh, you know, investment. No. We always say uh, keep your insurance separate and investments separate because insurance is nothing but it is uh, only to protect your uh, loved ones uh, from any financial uh, liability and health insurance for your own self and your uh, family. So, and uh, for investments, uh, there are so many different uh, avenues uh, available in the market depending on the uh, risk appetite. So that's what we do. We are tailor-made uh, firm. Paul, uh, that is uh, are operating in India, uh, uh, catering to individuals, corporates, HNIs, ultra HNIs. Um, uh, that's how it is. So I think we we finally come to the end of the session. Uh, but before that, I want to take your last words on the topic. Uh, what we want to leave us with before we wrap up. The last words. Sure. Thank you. Uh, firstly, uh, before I close, uh, I want to thank ICCE and uh, yourself, Paul, uh, for uh, bringing up such a wonderful topic. And uh, it's a very intriguing topic. It's a very uh, sometimes misleading topic. Uh, so I will say, uh, focus on goals. Uh, don't do a DIY approach. Uh, many people do a DIY, DIY approach and then you know lose their money. So consult an uh, independent financial advisor, whoever it is who, we, who can plan, who can plan uh, your investment because it's a hard earned money. We don't want uh, anyone, you know, to lose their money and uh, plan the goals well and uh, compound and see the beauty of compounding uh, in in your life. Thank, thank you. you very much, Morris. Uh, thank you for taking time.
time to share these perspectives with us. And thank you to our participants as well. This webinar has been brought to you by the ICC, the Institute of Certified Child uh, On this uh, meeting or this webinar, if you're interested in earning the uh, globally recognized certification economies, then I highly recommend the ICC to you. I already shared my email earlier. Uh, I will still send it now. So in case you want to reach out to me if you have any questions regarding the ICC, I'll be more than happy to assist you with. And so this session has been recorded. We'll make it available on our ICC's YouTube channel. We'll share with you via email, because as long as you're on this call, it means that you register for the ICC's webinar. So we'll come your way again soon with other webinars that we are creating, and we hope that you'll join us. Thank you. Enjoy the Thank rest. you. Thank you. You guys have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right.